All right, very nice folks around here. Must say, uh, the local guys that are fixing up the park gave us some water because they were all heading home, so they didn't need it. And we're gonna use it to make some food, aren't we? We found a shady picnic table, at least shady for a bit. So we're getting hungry. We're gonna have some of that leftover chicken from that fancy restaurant last night. And we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna try this dehydrated food for the first time. So I don't know how this is gonna go, but um, Kayla chose the chili mac and beef, and we're gonna see how this works, if this is a good idea or not. But we do have backup food just in case. So here goes nothing. We're gonna get some water, we're gonna heat it up, and we're gonna see what happens. Of course you are talking. Of course we're gonna talk about it. Oh, the chicken okay. is so good. So, one thing I noticed, good thing I noticed this, but according to the instructions, sounds pretty simple, right? Boil two cups of water, add it to the pouch, wait and eat, right? But they didn't tell you they stick these silica gels inside there. So if somebody wasn't watching and he boiled and ate and soaked it in silica gel, you could poison yourself. So keep in mind, take, make sure there's no silica gels in there. Dum-dums, they should really put that on the package. Okay, so we are going to We've boiled the water, turn it off, and we're gonna pour two cups of water into the bag, minus the silica gel they put in it, which I didn't appreciate. Try not to pour <laughs> this on your lap, like it looks like I'm going to. Pour it in the bag. Okay, two cups of water in the bag, boiling water, and then I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a stir. Stir it in a bit. Oh, skeetas have found us. Might have to get that bug spring. Try not to poke a hole in the bottom of the bag if you're stirring it. I think it's probably a good idea to stir it. And seal up the bag. So seal it up. This is a first. We're gonna make this totally wrong. Just feel well, it. I'm doing exactly what it tells me to do. I even measured the water, more or less. <laughs> If it's a little bit sloopy, it's because we put that little bit of extra water in, but I always find with any recipe, it's always a little bit shy on the water content. All right, so let it stand for 12 to 15 minutes. So basically at quarter after one, we can try it, we can eat. In the meantime, let's have some melon and some cucumber. Eat them up before they get all too warm and bad. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get some bug spray. Like this is why I brought the bug spray because see, you sit at a picnic table in the shade, they're attracted to the heat, and they go after you. So while Kayla's enjoying still being a bit of a kid, I'll tell you a little bit about what the guys in the park told me. That uh, this little town of Finley that we're in, uh, this clearing here was actually the site of the old foundry from like 150 years ago. So. There was a foundry here, and it, this was, oh, maybe 40, 50 years after the whole War of 1812 thing. So this was a bit later, so it wasn't used for military stuff. It was used for farm stuff. As all the settlers came in and everybody was given land, everybody needed uh, metalworks for their farm equipment. And so this was where they produced a lot of that for this area. Uh, so it was a great big foundry on this site. I don't know how long it went on for, but... Uh, that's just a little history, just to show when you just look at a simple thing like a park or a little town, you don't realize what was here originally, you know, and it's all turned into this, but that's what it was. The park in Finley, site of the old foundry. All right, so the moment of truth. It's been 15 minutes. We'll open it up. Ready? Okay, I think I solved my camera issues. I think, I think my battery's dying. So try and get a little bit of Port Stanley here. We just stopped for a huge lunch, so we don't need to stop in Port Stanley. But there is some pretty cool stuff here. There's a big tourist center. There's, of course, the big marina. Um, I'm gonna turn right here. And uh, there's all these old trains and stuff, but I couldn't get everything filmed. But the traffic's kind of bad, so. Uh, let's try and get through. You see the old bridges and stuff. Isn't that interesting? 
Uh, hey. So I'm just kind of cruising a bit through Port Stanley without really stopping too much. And let you see, Port Stanley. As far as where I'm going, I don't know. I guess I gotta check Google Maps. I've decided to let the GPS take over just to get us from Port Stanley to Port Burwell. We'll see where it takes us. It's taken us on some pretty dodgy back roads, but I've been avoiding the, the gravel ones for now just because of the extra cargo and the extra passenger. So I've been trying to stick to the pavement. And uh, we're just uh, kind of stuck way out in the country here. And gas is getting down a bit. But uh, it's saying we should be there within about a half hour. I've got to just pick up speed a bit. And hopefully it doesn't lead us onto some real nasty back road or anything like that. Because I know I have the GPS set on allow back roads. But I am the back roads of the Lake Erie shoreline between Port Stanley and Port Burwell. But there's a lot of gravel around here and I, I really didn't want to do gravel. We don't know where the gravel's going to end up. So. We're just trying to stay on the tarmac and hoping it gets me there. But that's it's pretty nice roads back here. It's kind of reminding me of the highlands a little bit. Finally get to see a little water line. That's Lake Erie there. Now we're really driving along a Lake Erie. This is the kind of roads I was hoping to find, so it's like for once the GPS came through for me. Just one gravel road and tried to lead me down. That was my fault. I had it set on that. Doing good. Heading down the coastline. Trying to find the next port on Just passing through another port that wasn't even on my list. Port Bruce. So this here would be Port Bruce. Just cruising on through. Alright, we're heading on to Port Royal. Via GPS. Hopefully it's Got to keep doing a good job. It's, it's actually giving me some nice roads. Starting to watch my gas now. I'm down to three pubs. And I have not seen a gas station in any of these ports. So I don't know if I'm just missing them or what. But if worse comes to worse and I start getting down to one pub, I better uh, look up the GPS for the closest gas station. Some really nice land here along the lake. I'm actually surprised. Oh, I gotta let this truck go, hang on. They're rolling up my ass while I'm trying to sightsee. Anyway, I'm actually surprised that it's just farmland uh, in such old country right on the lake like this. I figured it'd be all lawyer mansions. But I'd give it time, I guess. But it's, uh, it's pretty nice country right now, the way it is on these roads, going right along the shoreline. If you ask me, the, the ports are kind of like the, the busy, hectic, chaotic areas and when you get out in the country along this, what's, what's called the Waterfront Trail, it's actually quite nice. It's quite a nice ride. So we're just cruising along here, but I'm thinking of stopping somewhere to try and GPS the nearest gas station. Because, like I said, they're not giving me any on this route. Look at that. Who knew that they're growing soybeans right on the edge of the water? Kind of nice to see. Just cruising up Lake Erie. Getting closer to wine country. Doing like a tour around all the ports. So <laughs> Port Burwell, <laughs> Port Stanley, Port Glasgow. Yeah, we, we yeah. just came through Port Bruce. Are you uh, yeah, went through Port South Glasgow, Hill, New Glasgow, yeah. and all that, and just filming yeah. it and stuff, you know, and uh, just filming the trip and taking yeah. my daughter for a nice tour. Oh, yeah, I took mine the other day. Did you? Yeah. yeah. We went up to uh, Bay Bayfield. Oh, yeah. That was okay, you know. Yeah, she probably put this on. Still got to do this for a bit. Yeah, she was down, oh. she's got from Amsterdam for a bit. So oh, well, there you go. We'll just go on a ride. She so yeah. took her on a ride. Yeah, that's yeah, a good. Yeah, little one. Well, I figured there'd be lots of bikes in this town, and as I get closer yeah. to Port Dover... Oh, I came through Port Dover. Yeah, you're going to see a lot here. Yeah. There was quite a few. You know, like there was, I guess, a weekend down there. Yeah. 
so blinking hot today though, eh? Well, yeah. We can't wear the jackets. Well, I've got a jacket, but it's uh, got the mesh in the yeah. front, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, in Port Burwell, and uh, we're thirsty, so we got some mango juice here. Mango juice in a coffee cup. I'm gonna try it that way. Guess we're gonna. Mm. You enjoying your mango juice in a coffee cup? Cup? While you're in like 40 degree heat, dressed completely in black and <laughs> from head to toe. <laughs> Everyone else is walking around, nothing but a pair of shorts. Mm. What can you do? That's that's one of the downfalls of biking. You're always dressed heavy. Mm. But we will do what we can do. So this place is called Simply Scoops and we're in line. And it's supposed to be a great place to get ice cream here in Port Burwell. So we're going to give it a try. Simply Scoops, what kind did you get? Vanilla chocolate twist. And I've never seen it on that kind of cone like for the soft ice cream. You got to tell me how that works out. And I got my favorite orange pine. Just ice cream and waffle. So we want to see this submarine here in Port Burwell, but I can't figure out how to get to it. So <laughs> we came from the main drag where all the ice cream and everything is, and there's like no path or anything goes to it. So we're kind of cutting through somebody's lawn just to I get to it. it was, I think we went the wrong direction. Well, I think we probably would have had to take the bike around through the marina and down this road or something. But they, they should have some kind of a road that goes from the main drag to they the sub. They probably do. I didn't see anything because the other one like it was like a restaurant patio and you just get stuck there anyway this is the big sub permits required for commercial photography well I'm not commercially photographing this is just for my own personal private use but this is called the Ojibwe sub I haven't read the blurb on it yet so we'll have to find out about that we could have come in on the bike here see I know, but now, now we'll have to walk all the way back, just you know. So, if you're blah about on the bike, you're blah about coming back. I don't know if you can go on it. Well, there probably is tours of it, but let me guess, COVID. But this is a, as far as I know, a real submarine. And look at the size of it. The thing is massive. Can you imagine the stuff like this floating around out in the great seas, the great oceans? I don't even know how they got it here. So there we are. Disappointed again. Because the sub is like by appointment only, like every other thing. The guy, the guide was there and he was talking to four other people and he just had this the gate locked and he wouldn't even look at us. So that's the way it is nowadays. You can't go to a museum anymore unless you like arrange it six months ahead of time so no museum we just got a couple pictures of it so I guess we're gonna move on because it's already four o'clock we still got a couple of ports to get through before we go on to Simcoe so as I was just saying to Kayla if you drive 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 you miss everything but if you stop everywhere the day's just gone there's just not enough time to do it so you just got to do a mixture of everything so I gotta